When fitting upper extremity body powered devices, one of the biggest challenges is certainly choosing the right wrist for the job. Uh, there are a lot of options. I think at one point I counted 56 different options and wrists. So obviously this is not all the wrists we have, but I think this will give you a pretty good idea of what those options look like. Um, so we'll kind of go through the different categories from our economy friction to constant friction, flexion, quick disconnects, quick disconnects with friction. There's a lot of different things here. So we'll go down each category and explain some of the differences and benefits from each one. Okay, so these are good representations of our more economy friction style wrists. So the way these wrists work is that if I take these apart from the way they come, we've got a lot of parts and pieces here. We are going to add a terminal device. And after we put this terminal device in, I'm going to tighten it down, and the tighter I make this, the more resistance to rotation I have. So that's the basic economy friction style wrist there. The bad thing is, if I move this from a, let's say, a, a supinated to a pronated position, there's actually less friction in that case than there is here. So for that patient, they've got to decide exactly where in space they want this to sit to accomplish the amount of friction they want. Good thing is it's fairly easy to replace most of the components. So it's a very simple part. This wrist is available in several styles. So the different styles are this basic round. There is an oval shaped version of this wrist. There's also this wrist disarticulation version of the wrist, which gives you a really nice low profile, but you're gonna to have to do some shaping to get the socket to look nice. There's also an economy style wrist like this that has heavy duty straps coming off the back, and that's gonna be a stainless design. So for a very heavy duty patient who's constantly wrist, ripping wrists off, it gives them an option for something a little more robust. So that covers constant friction, or excuse me, that covers this economy variable friction style wrist. Style wrist. So next what we need to look at is gonna be the constant style friction style wrist. So with constant friction, constant friction is gonna be a little different in that no matter where within that rotation of the terminal device, the amount of friction on that rotation is gonna be exactly the same. And with these wrists, that's accomplished through a set screw that's gonna be in the side. So you'll see in this one, there's a set screw that goes in through the side here, and it's gonna tighten this ring down. In this case, which is our WE friction wrist, there's a set screw here, and that's going to tighten in on a nylon ring. Or with this one, which is our wedge grip style uh, wrist, it's actually going to be tightening the metal threads down so you actually get a tight metal on metal contact so differences between these so for the plastic ones we get these nice rings this is the shapeable passive hand wrist so what this is going to let me do is it's actually going to allow me to shape this wrist down to the back of that passive hand it's going to come in three different sizes so i've got some options for where to start when i go to put this together this one is for children. This is our cap wrist. Very small, very lightweight nylon wrist, again with that same constant friction tightening through the band. These are that WE style friction wrist, and it is available in a lot of different sizes. There's three sizes of round. The round ones are nice like this because they're going to allow you to remove and replace that friction insert. That friction insert's gonna have that nylon ring that you're gonna be tightening down on with this set screw. So allows for easy tightening, easy replacement, and allows that patient to get really a nice smooth rotation of that wrist. It does come in these oval sizes. The oval sizes, if you'll remember, are really primarily about these passive hands and these longer transradial sockets. Because if you think about that shape, I'm trying to match out here on the end. If I have a very long transradial limb, that limb is very oval shaped, and the round wrist like this will actually look fairly silly out on the end. So I always try to match a long residual limb with an oval shaped wrist, or in the case of a passive hand, it also gives me a good option there too. 
also available in the little tiny infant style. The infant one, though, has no replaceable insert, but they should not be wearing that out, so that makes it pretty simple. Now, if we move over to their wedge grip, so the wedge grip is going to use a full metal insert. So you're going to be able to tighten this all the way down. It's going to come in two different uh, round sizes and two oval sizes so that you have really a simple way to fit kind of those more heavy duty friction users. It does come with a little note on there. When we send you these nice little notes, pay good close attention because they're really important. Don't tighten this one without a terminal device in there because you're going to end up messing up your threads. So. Do make sure that you follow the instructions on any of these wrists. Flexion wrists provide some very valuable functionality to a patient. These really allow a patient to reach the midline for things like buttoning their shirt, feeding themselves, and other uh, activities of daily living. So it's really nice when you have the room and the desire by a patient, especially if this is the dominant device or their bilateral, that's really when these are going to be important. But it's great to put one of these in. So this is our FW friction or flexion wrist. It uses a friction insert for rotation control. There are two other wrist types that we can use. Now they're inserts, they're not wrists themselves as far as not something you're laminating in. They actually have screw in backs on them. Uh, there's our Sierra flexion wrist for adults and the pediatric uh, APRL wrist uh, for children. Now those are gonna allow the use of uh, mechanical hands. In the case of these FW style flexion wrists, it's really important to remember that they're only to be used with prosthetic hooks. And we'll show you why. So when I put this hook on, it's very easy to move this in space and it doesn't interfere with anything. Now this is the small flexion wrist. It's gonna come in two sizes. But even in this case, you'll see that when I go to put a hand on here that's properly sized, and I try to flex it, the hand gets in the way of the flexion. This is why it's very important to remember if you're going to need a flexion wrist, that you use the FW flexion wrist only in the case of prosthetic hooks. If you need to use it with a hand, you'll need to either choose the APRL style flexion wrist for children, which has three ball detent stopping points, or the adult Sierra flexion wrist, um, which allows the adult to actually use a hand as well with firm stopping points instead of the ball detents. So those are your flexion wrist options. Do, of course, remember your Sierra Flexion and your APRL are not wrist units in themselves and actually will code separately. You need to pick the correct code for those wrists, which will not be a wrist code. It's an additional body power code. The only flexion wrist will be this FWSL flexion wrist. Within body power devices, one of the most popular wrist options is going to be quick disconnect wrists. Quick disconnect wrists are really great because they allow me to change out terminal devices. So if I need to go to an activity specific style terminal device, or I need to go from a hand to a hook, I can do that really easily and quickly. Now there's gonna be two versions of those. I need either a locking one that's gonna lock solid, or some patients are gonna to prefer to have the ability to do a quick disconnect with only a friction resistance to rotation. So we're gonna cover all um, of those types of devices. We'll do five different wrist types that should give you enough adjustability and, um, and differences in functionality for you to really hit what your patient's looking for. So the first device that we're gonna to choose to look at here is gonna be our uh, quick disconnect wrist. You may know this is like a USMC style quick disconnect wrist. And a great way to know what you're looking at is gonna be by the shape and design of this insert. So this is that quick disconnect, USMC style quick disconnect wrist insert. You'll need one of these for each terminal device that you're choosing to fit the patient with. So this one has teeth on the bottom, so there's gonna be fewer locking positions, but these are very strong locking positions. You'll see that bar, that stainless steel bar down at the bottom of the wrist unit. So when this one pops in, one click is gonna get us free rotation with slight friction, and a second click with a little bit of rotation is gonna get us locked all the way in, and in that case, we're not gonna get any rotation of the terminal device. 
So very simple to choose, very simple to fit, because there's a few options on this one. Not only are we gonna have the standard two inch, we're gonna have a one and a three quarter inch for smaller individuals. This one's also gonna come in two different sizes of, uh, of uh, uh, oval shaped wrist units. So you get some great options with this particular device. The next one on the list is gonna be the FM style quick disconnect. And this is a very well known device. You'll recognize it by the many teeth around the sides. This gives a lot of adjustment and locking position on the inside. You will see that this particular wrist unit has these little teeth that integrate into those little, um, the little uh, slots on the sides here. The downside is that those are not going to be quite as strong as the USMC style quick disconnect as far as digging in and holding. Uh, so it will wear out a little quicker due to rotational forces, but it's a really tough wrist. And the nice thing is that it comes in a lot of different um, constructions. So this one is an aluminum bodied wrist. It does have a stainless steel face that's going to hold this quick disconnect um, insert in. The same double click, one for rotation, second click locks the device in. But it also is going to come in a full stainless steel version where not only the upper, but the wrist unit itself is going to be stainless steel, or you can get this in a titanium, full titanium version, which will really lighten this up and give that same great strength that the stainless steel unit has. So some really good options with this device for those really high-end users that need something that's going to be tough. Um, this is going to be great for those users that are going to be doing a lot of pushing and pulling of weights. If I've got a lot of rotation, I may go back to the USMC style just because of that big bar in the bottom. But for most uses, this FM style is going to be really good. So those are my two basic locking unit styles. So let's bring in a friction unit. So our first friction unit, this is a quick disconnect that uses a friction on the inside. So I'm able to adjust how easy it is to rotate this device once it's in. So I'm going to pop my insert in. You'll notice the distinct shape of this one. We'll pop our insert in. You'll see that rotation is controlled through a set screw here on the side. So I'm going to be able to control the friction of that rotation. So I'll pop a unit in here. And we'll go ahead and press that all the way down and in. So that's what it's going to look like when it's locked down and in. You can see there is still friction rotation of this device. It never locks fully. I'm going to adjust that friction right in through here. One thing that's really neat about this particular device is this is what's using, uh, it's using what's called a lamination ring. So you can see this inner plate on the inside. If the patient were to uh, somehow destroy this whole upper portion of the wrist unit, you can actually remove all that wrist and this small lamination ring will still be in the socket and the rest of this can be replaced without replacing the whole socket. This lamination ring is available on most wrist styles. So if you have a patient that's gonna wear some stuff out, sometimes it's a great idea to purchase the wrist unit that has the lamination ring so that you can easily and quickly replace the entire wrist unit if the patient destroys it somehow. So note that's in there. You can see that in any of our catalogs or in our posters, whether or not the wrist unit is available with that option, highly recommend using it. The next quick disconnect style wrist is a little different. So this wrist uses rotation of the face to lock and unlock the wrist unit. Now when you get it, it's gonna come with this funky little piece of straw in here really, really important to pay attention to instructions. I don't know how many times I've had the phone call where somebody just pulled this off and jammed this full of silicone when they were going to laminate it. If you read the instructions, you'll find that this little piece right here is made so I can get this little snap ring off. And it's really important because when I go to do my lamination, I don't want all that stuff in there. This is gonna all need to come out to make that lamination work. So I'm gonna pull all this stuff free, laminate it, and then put these little pieces back. And what that will give me, when I put all this back on, is a wrist that's gonna operate very differently than the rest. Obviously not a great wrist um, for patients 
with uh, bilateral involvement because they're going to hard have a hard time getting it apart. Here, we'll just leave that off for now. But the nice thing about this is as I open and close this, and you can see as I rotate this what happens, a little bar and a little peg come in and lock and create friction with this wrist unit. So I'm going to slide my wrist unit down and in. There's one direction fully is going to unlock it for me. There we go. So once it's down and in, I can turn it part of the way, and that's just going to keep my insert from popping out. I'm going to turn it the rest of the way, and now I've actually locked out rotation. So I get a lock, I get friction, and I get a full release when I turn it fully around. So from a full lock to a free friction with just a rotation of the top of the device. Great for somebody who doesn't want the button out there to control that wrist unit's motion, but it can be a real challenge if somebody doesn't have great dexterity with the other side. The last version of wrist we have is our Omega style wrist, and it looks very different. Um, so you'll see this insert actually has those locking positions up here on the top of the insert itself. It drops very easily down into the face of the wrist unit because it uses a button. There's a small switch here on the side that allows us to go from lock to unlock. And it's very quick and easy, very low profile because we don't have the spring down in here. No reason for that in this particular design. Really strong locking positions with this stainless steel face. This is going to come not only in the round version, but you're going to have some options. This one's also going to come in an oval shaped wrist. Um, and with two different colors of, uh, of cap on it, both the black anodized and the, um, and the raw, um, the raw uh, aluminum face, uh, silver face. Uh, with this, it also comes with an add-on kit that allows you to put a friction um, insert on the top of this, which is just an O-ring that's allowed to compress between the devices, but it does give you some friction control rotation as well, so you can get both with the Omega wrist. That gives you kind of a basic overview of the simple wrist styles and types. Hopefully this gives you an idea of where, where um, to best fit your patient functionally so that you have an idea of where to start to achieve those things that they're looking to do. Um, don't forget with each one of these you're going to have different coding. It's very important to make sure to check your coding ahead of time so that you make sure you get the proper number of inserts and the proper style wrist for the function that you expect and the durability you expect from the device. Thanks a lot.